More than 30 individuals arrested, all seen here on this board, all of them allegedly connected with a violent street gang. And they established a link between these individuals and our shooting. 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 Um, we the people that people try to like to erase out the history to an extent, but you can't erase it. You can't erase it. You can't erase it. You can't erase it. Chapter 1. Yellow Top Crap. YTC were one of the most powerful drug organizations in Manhattan. YTC stood for Yellow Top Crew. The gang's name was in reference to the color of the caps on their crack vials. YTC controlled the 12 block radius in Manhattan Valley on the Upper West Side. Manhattan Valley stretches between 96th Street and 110th Street. At its peak, YTC had 48 members. Members of the gang were aged between 14 to 20 years old. The gang was led by Titon and Chango. Titon. Chango. From 1990 to 1994, YTC ran a $5 billion a year drug operation. YTC became one of the most prominent drug gangs during the crack epidemic. Chango was born in Puerto Rico. He spent his childhood in New York City before moving back to Puerto Rico. He later returned to America and settled in Manhattan. It was around this time that his path crossed with Titon. Chapter 2. Learning the Game Titon was born in Washington Heights, Manhattan. He would later move with his family to an area of the Bronx. In 1988, Titon started selling crack in the Bronx. He was 14 years old. Shortly thereafter, Titon moved back to Manhattan where he met Chango. Maketumba was a dope dealer from 109th Street in Amsterdam. Had a lot of money, a lot of cars, a lot of charisma, a lot of swag, you know what I'm saying? He was tough. tough His operation tough, tough, was on the Lower East Side of Manhattan. He was well respected by everyone. Like many people in the neighborhood, Titon and Chango idolized him. So it was everything that we wanted to be at that time. In the late 80s, Maketumba took Chango and Titon under his wing. there was an internal war going on within Maketumba's own organization. In 1990, Maketumba and three members of his crew were shot in a drive-by. Maketumba and his enforcer, Koho, survived but were seriously injured. The other two members of the crew died from gunshot wounds. Maketumba and his three friends were on their way to see a fight, I believe at the Palladium, when they were shot up. They were shot up on the Houston exit of the FDR Drive, New York City. 
The one guy got hit 30 times from his waist to his head, 30 times from an AK-47. You think about what he must have looked like. And the uh, aftermath was two people dead and two people critically injured. So injured that Make could not get out of the car. His legs were broken from the gunshots. He was 207 pounds. Koho is sitting beside him trying to pull him out, but he's also shot the fuck up. But he couldn't pull Make out of the car. He was able to open the door and fall out. A month later, there was a second attempt on Makatumba's life. Makatumba was murdered along with his right-hand man, Koho. They were gunned down in front of the building where Make's mother lived. Two shootings were believed to be linked. After Maketumbe died, Chango and Titon started selling crack again. So basically, we started out selling crack. We was the youngest one in the neighborhood. That wasn't really seen in that neighborhood, so a lot of people looked at us like we had no guidance. So they, they used to be like, you know, though they had little brothers or sisters, they didn't want them around us and. They still idolized this dude named Makatumba that's from my neighborhood, so they told him the story thinking he was gonna agree with them, but in turn, he just was admired because he saw us and him. So he put us under the wing, so when he did that, we stopped fucking with the crack and just started hanging out with Maki, and he was really dealing with dope, and he started off trying to give us a block, but then, you know, being that he knew my mom, my mom had babysit him and he took a liking to us like we was his kids, even though he was only like seven years older than us or something like that. He just started giving his money to go to school. He would give us, you know, me $2,000 and Chang $2,000 to go to school. In reality, it was, you know, 20 bundles of dope each and we would give it to someone else and get back like $1,400, $1,500, but we didn't have to give him nothing back. So at that age, 15, you know, that shit was a lot of money. We didn't have to do nothing. Then we ride around with him and, you know, build off his prestige and, you know, be in his car and things of that nature and have access to drive his cars. If we had a girl that we wanted to take out, like, he put us under the wing. But then when he died, we got back to hustling. We went to the east side. We met another guy that was in the same building hustling. They asked us if we could sell him work because he didn't have none. And um, he was selling yellow. So we started giving him work. But um, the kids from the east side started noticing it's coming by, giving work. So they pressed him, they beat him up. And he wasn't really a drug dealer. He just was doing that because he lost his job and shit. So we was like, you don't worry about it, we got this. But he was like, man, fuck that. I'm not dealing with this lifestyle. So we was like, let me get the keys to them rooms that you got over there. And we're going to take over this color. So that's what we did. We just basically took over the whole situation with a whole West Side team. Chapter 3, The East Side. Titon and Chango put a crew together and moved to East Harlem, Manhattan. They started selling crack on 115th Street between Lexington and 3rd Avenue. They took control of the neighborhood. We opened up over there you know, with our team from the west side and basically shot the neighborhood and kept them at bay. This was the beginning of YTC. Sammy Santana was an old-time gangster. He would rob and extort drug dealers. In his generation, he was like the goblin. goblin, goblin. Raymond was the protege of YTC's Drug Connect. Raymond's boss was being extorted by Sammy Santana. Raymond allegedly took out a contract on Sam, but the gunman botched the hit. 
After surviving the alleged attempt on his life, Sammy wanted revenge. Fearing for his life, Raymond allegedly asked YTC if they would kill Sammy. In August 1990, Sammy was standing outside a barber shop in Manhattan Valley. Sammy was shot three times and died on the scene. YTC were allegedly behind the murder of Sammy Santana. After 10 months on the east side, the building from which YTC ran their operation closed down. We did that for like 10 months and the only reason we left over there was because the city came and shut the building down because the building was so you know, rampant with drug activity. YTC returned back to the upper west side. They set up shop on 105th Street and Columbus Avenue. But this block was controlled by a Purple Top crew, PTC. The two crews reached an amicable agreement. YTC moved to 107th Street. Chapter 4, All About the Money. YTC gradually expanded their operation. They soon had half of Manhattan Valley under their control. With large amounts of money flowing in, the Don and Chango's lifestyle changed. YTC used threats, intimidation, and extreme violence to protect their turf. In late 1991, Diton allegedly got into a shootout on West 140th Street and Broadway. Gangsta Lou of the rap group Mob Star was shot in the chest, but survived. Gangsta Lou was affiliated with Harlem drug dealers AZ, Alpo, and Rich Porter. A few days later, Two men shot at members of YTC using silencers. What the fuck? YTC members escaped unharmed, but one of their customers was shot multiple times. This was believed to be direct retaliation for Gangsta Lou getting shot. A few days later, two men were seen standing suspiciously on YTC's block. They were arrested after cops found silenced weapons, machine guns, and bulletproof vests. RTC were a drug gang from Manhattan Valley. They were led by Jose Luis and Tribilin. RTC, which stood for Red Top Crew, formed in early 1992. Chango and Titon were good friends with Jose Luis and Trimbilin. YTC helped RTC open up their first spot on 108th Street. But things didn't work out, and so RTC moved to 105th Street. We were the youngest ones that came out to the streets to hustle we was like in our generation the first one then red top came afterwards and a bunch of other little crews was roaming around but um what happened with red top was that we came to an agreement where they could work around us and then things didn't work out and we got into a discrepancy why jail was in jail so that was that but after that we didn't really never have no other discrepancies with them or whatsoever if anything we kind of like united and shit when jail came home and shit as a friendship and helped them out with certain things and then chapter four 
better call Lynn. Lynn Stewart was a prominent New York civil rights lawyer. Her clients ranged from political activists to gangsters. Some of her clients included Larry Davis, Omar Abdel Rahman, and Makatumba. Lynn also defended YTC members in a wide range of cases involving serious violence, guns, drugs, and murder. The drug trade in Manhattan Valley was controlled by three main gangs. PTC, which stood for Purple Top Crew, were led by Issa and Sheik. In 1992, YTC got into a shootout with PTC at a park. PTC members came out on the losing end of the violent exchange. Later that year, Chango was sentenced to one year in prison for carrying a Mac-10. While serving time in Rikers, Chango was charged with five counts of attempted murder for the shootout at the park. ETC asked Dithon to pay them $50,000 in exchange for dropping the charges. They then demanded YTC shut down their operation on 107th Street and Columbus Avenue. Dithon refused to give in to their extortion. Lynn got the five attempted murder charges against Django dismissed. After serving seven months in prison, Chango was released on a $15,000 bail. YTC continued to face pressure from law enforcement. In late 1992, Titon allegedly recruited a crooked cop. In return for cash, the cop would pass on confidential information to YTC. Lynn Stewart, that was my attorney, my one and only attorney. That was also Maketumba's attorney before she became my attorney. He's the one that introduced me to her. She was also the attorney I used for all of my workers. She was also the attorney for back in the days, Larry Davis. She's been an attorney for many people. She's been highlighted in the Daily News as um, in an article they had about the 10 best lawyers in New York City. She was like a second mother to me. I dare to say that you can't speak about YTC without speaking about her because she's been successful at winning murder cases, drug cases, gun cases, etc., etc. She was my attorney to the end. She continued to be my friend until I got out. She continued to be my friend while I've been out. Um, you know, sadly, she just passed away after battling cancer, breast cancer. Chapter 5, Red Top Crew. YTC had built up a $5 million a year drug operation. Rumors were the preacher wanted to kidnap Diton and Chango for ransom. Black was a drug dealer who had a spot on 110th Street. Supposedly, Black was the cousin of Lou Sims, leader of the lynch mob. YTC shut down Black's operation on 110th Street. They gave the spot to a guy named Babyface, but that arrangement didn't work out. RTC needed more workers, so YTC recommended they hire Babyface. Meanwhile, Jose Luis was charged with murder for allegedly killing someone at a party in the City College of New York. 
Don and Chango got Lin to be his attorney, and she subsequently got him out on bail. The victim's cousins from 135th Street were allegedly looking for revenge. They were allegedly threatening to kill Jose Luis. Jose Luis then allegedly hired someone to kill the person that was making threats. Frank Nitti was one of the original founders of the Red Top Crew. He allegedly provided startup money for RTC. In 1993, Frank Nitti allegedly shot Trimbiling and Jose Luis. Trimbiling died of gunshot wounds to the head. Jose Luis was shot in the chest, but he survived. After the shooting, Frank Nitti allegedly went on the run. Trimbiling's funeral was held three days later. After the funeral, Chango drove Jose Luis home. Unbeknownst to them, they were being followed. Chango dropped Jose Luis in front of his building and drove away. Twenty minutes later, Jose Luis was gunned down outside his apartment building. Allegedly, the shooting was revenge for the murder at the city college and the murder of the victim's cousin. Jose Luis, a.k.a. J.L. Jose Luis was a thorough dude, great friend, official tissue. Um, we had nothing to do with his murder. Not even in thinking and planning in any way, no form or fashion. He got smoked, we got the blame for it. Then the dudes that actually did it confessed, and we still were getting the blame by the public, but it got dismissed in court. And nobody's ever bothered to go to court and ask who the fuck did it. They just happy blaming us for it. But we didn't do it. And had no reason to do it. You know, when I came back to 109th Street, after Jose Luis was shot up, I only had gotten to 107th Street, so I, I ran back to 109th Street. He was already on his way to the hospital. Some guys picked him up, put him in a car, and took him to the hospital. His sister was on the block, literally, picking up his brains from the floor and putting them in the palm of her hand. That's the last time I saw her. And that's the last time I saw any bit of him. Right before I left him there, we talking, I come back and the only thing that was left on the sidewalk was brain matter, blood, tragic. And it hurt me for a long time, you know? One of our employees, strong, another strong dude, thorough dude, all the way to the end, always loyal, you know? Um, live wire, Damon, he got charged with it. He held it down until it was dismissed from him. He knew he didn't do it. He just held on, you know? Like I said, man, official tissue. After Jose Luis died, Babyface wanted to take over RTC's operation. But YTC vetoed the idea because he wasn't strong enough to hold off PTC. Babyface, who was a suspect in two murders and a kidnapping, wasn't happy. He started spilling secrets to rivals and talked about killing Titong and Chango. YTC felt they could no longer trust him because he was a threat to their safety. In December 1993, Babyface was gunned down in a grocery store while playing a video game.
YTC were allegedly behind the murder of Babyface. That same year, they were allegedly involved in two more murders. Raymond, YTC's former connect, tried to establish a drug block on YTC's territory. He opened up a crack spot on Columbus Avenue, but YTC shut it down. He then put workers on Amsterdam Avenue, but YTC also shut that down. Raymond then allegedly put out a $40,000 contract to have Titon and Chango killed. Raymond grew up in my building, well, my grandmother's building, where I basically grew up at, you know, on and off. My mother would go back there whenever things went bad for us and she broke up and we needed to regroup and restart. We would go back to my grandmother's house. So that's how that became my hood you know, away from wherever I would be growing up at the time or whatever. So basically he wasn't down with us. He was um, working with the dude with the connect, his protege, whatever you want to call him. We realized that he was charging us dumb points, extra points than the average person was getting in it. So we learned the points. Remember, we was young. So now we was like, we're willing to take work from you, but you're going to have to beat these points right here. You got to beat these prices that they're giving us now because now we know what it is. So, you know, he really couldn't beat it, so I guess he felt salty behind that and whatever else. And plus, he was kind of an envious individual. And I took 250 grand from him one time, you know what I'm saying, and never gave him the money back. He probably felt salty behind that, too. And then he wanted to open up, and we didn't allow that to happen. You know what I mean? So he came up with that bright idea of putting out them hits. Chapter 6. Payback. Dilly was a member of YTC. Raymond allegedly paid Dilly $25,000 to help him set up the Thong and Chango. Raymond allegedly told Dilly that he could also have their blocks. Raymond hired a team from Brooklyn to carry out the hit. Dilly stole a picture of Chango from Chango's house and gave it to Raymond. Raymond gave the picture to the hit team so they could identify the target. In May 1994, Chango was standing on Columbus Avenue. All of a sudden, three men approached him and started shooting. Chango managed to survive the shooting by playing dead. Two days later, the same three shooters then tried to kill Titon. Titon was shot in the arm and in the head, but he survived. An undercover surveillance sergeant who arrived on the scene was also shot. Unbeknownst to YTC, they had been under surveillance for several months. Police are now investigating a deadly shooting on the Upper West Side. Police officer is recovering in the hospital after being shot. shot, shot. After the hit on Titon and Chango failed, Raymond was getting ready to leave town. YTC then allegedly brought over a hitman named Coco from Puerto Rico. Chango and a member of YTC approached Raymond outside of his apartment building. While Chango distracted Raymond by talking to him, Coco tapped him on the shoulder. Raymond was shot nine times at point-blank range but he survived. The police was right around the corner and arrested Coco.
Chango managed to escape, but he was arrested two days later. Raymond, Raymond was just a, a real grimy, snaky ass motherfucker, you know? He just couldn't get his way, he couldn't manipulate us, he couldn't move us, couldn't push us, couldn't get us out the way. And that's what he did, he plotted to have us killed. And so I went up there with Fellow, rest in peace. And I went up there with another two dudes and they were in a car and me and Fellow were on foot. And Fellow had a Glock, I had a Glock and none of us could get close to him because he knew what he did, but he was pretending like he wanted to help us offering me guns for Tito since Tito had just got shot. So since I couldn't get close to him, the other two individuals went around the block, or rather up the block, got out the car, came walking down, and as soon as I saw that homeboy got close enough to tap him on the shoulder, I started to walk away. In his mind, he's probably wondering what the fuck is wrong with this dude. So the dude kept tapping him on the shoulder so he could turn around, and he wouldn't turn around. And then when I looked back and I was finally a little distance away, he started to turn around. And when he turned around, all I heard was pop, pop, pop. And that's it. Everybody started running to 109th Street to see what was going on. And me and Fellow were walking in the opposite direction, which later is what drew attention, you know? Because we the only two motherfuckers that weren't interested in what was going on. We got around the corner though, a cop came running around the corner and got one of the dudes, which is Coco. And um, Fellow bust his gun in the air to try to get the cop to get off of um, Coco, and he did, but there were more cops coming now, and he didn't make it but one block away. Raymond made it five blocks away to St. Luke's. A month later, while on Rikers Island, Chango was rearrested for another case. Titon was also arrested. Don and Chango built a complex business structure which included two supervisors who oversaw six street managers who in turn were in charge of more than a dozen street sellers. In June 1994, 48 members of YTC were indicted on murder and drug charges, including eight murders and 13 attempted murders. Titon was sentenced to 30 years with 12 years minimum in drug trafficking conspiracy. Chango received a 15 year to life plea for conspiracy to commit first degree murder. Dilly went on the run after the botched hits, but he got caught up in a murder and handed himself in. Raymond was sentenced to 42 years. Coco was sentenced to 18 years for shooting Raymond. Frank Nitty received a sentence of 19 years to life. Issa was sentenced to 22 years. Sheik was sentenced to 8 to 25 years. Lynn Stewart was sentenced to 10 years for aiding a terrorist. She later received compassionate release and died of cancer in 2016. YTC ruled Manhattan Valley with crack, cash, and bullets. Yellows out! Yellows out! We did what we thought we had to. Same as most people do daily. We survived. That's what everybody tries to do daily. In our case, it took killing to survive. Am I happy with that? Is my boy happy with that? Hell to the no. Could it have been done differently? Hell to the yes. And I wish we had did it differently. 
Yeah, people died, but those weren't innocent people neither, you know? Some of these people died with guns on them. Some of them died with homicide warrants. Out for them. Will we have did those things like we did then, now? I could tell you for sure I wouldn't. I'm gonna gamble and say that Tito wouldn't either. You know, we carry heavy hearts because of the things that happened also. What you do, people shooting at you, do you shoot back with the question? It was real drama, man. People walking around, shooting at us in broad daylight. People just coming around, doing what they want, trying to plot, trying to kill us, trying to end us, trying to take what we got. What do you do? Do you give it to them or no? What do you do? Do you shoot back or no? What do you do? Do you kill who's trying to kill you? Those are the questions, you know? We just were good at making difficult situations um, work, and, and we were good at making difficult decisions. It don't mean we think them things are still good. They they not. They weren't then, but that's, what do you do? You're 16, 17, 18, 19 years old. You got a machine that makes money daily. Tens of thousands of dollars every day. What do you do? You're 17, 18, you know, you put it in your pocket $10,000 at a time. That's profit. We don't even have nothing to spend it on, you know? What do you do? You go crazy. That's what we did, man, you know? But we weren't stupid and we weren't abusive. And we didn't just hurt people just to hurt them. We dealt with what we had to deal with, man, you know? We were dead wrong, but guess what? It's better to be dead wrong than just dead, you know what I'm saying? Say that Martin was a, a master uh, CEO. Uh, to use a modern day language, he was a chief executive officer. He ran the situation. Somebody went to jail. He took care of them. He took care of their family. He went in for a while. He made sure things ran with his very able companion who was very, very different from him. Tito, that would be. Uh, but he kept it going and he was, as I say, he was having been given half a chance, having been given an education, having been given all the things that were automatic to kids of my complexion, to young men of my complexion, he would have gone very far. He would have been, as they say, somebody. The fact that because of the economics and the way it worked, he was constrained to become a major drug dealer and control this territory and control his people. It, it led him on a different course. Can you say course, I should say? I can't say. How can I say he was wrong to do that? According to the law, he was certainly wrong. According to the currently held thinking then and now, dealing in drugs is a bad thing. <laughs> Yo, Guala, what's good, man? TG, what's good? Ain't shit, bro. It's like, everywhere I go, I'm hearing niggas screaming that gang, gang, gang shit, bro. What? It's like, I don't see this shit, though, bro. It's crazy, man. Me neither. But other than that, let's get right to it, man. Squaw. Everybody screaming gang, 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 gang. But them niggas ain't never gang, bang, gang, bang. When you see me, just know that I got that thing. And everywhere that I go, they know my name. Everybody screaming gang, 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 gang. But them niggas ain't never gang, bang, gang, bang. When you see me, just know that I got that thing. And everywhere that I go, they know my name. Seven blocks, six from in the lobby Lob. And everything I do, these niggas, they wanna copy Cop. If I play the back seat, you know I'm getting a sloppy uh. If I dub in the week, you know that shorty's a chop. Get out here Uptown, smoking the best pitted best. Niggas disrespect, I'm aiming straight force fitted boom, boom, boom. 40 hit his chest and knock him straight off his pivot oh, I do man. this shit for real, I'm living this shit you spin And I move around with my gang and gang, gang. And my gang, more like brothers, they my fan. fan. And for my fam, I go dummy, I go ham. I go Don't go against us, my nigga, you got no chance. Nah. You better off fucking with them godless men. Fuck me. Oh, end up sticking this out of a garbage can. Now what's that smell? You don't believe me, then nigga, I gotta show you. Gotta show I send my little riders to run up and sow you. Everybody screaming gang, 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 gang. But them niggas ain't never gang, bang, gang, gang. 
When you see me, just know that I got that thing. And everywhere that I go, they know my name. Everybody screaming gang, 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 gang. But them niggas ain't never gang bang. When you see me, just know that I got that thing. And everywhere that I go, they know my name. Young nigga, the life of a drug dealer. Fuck a band, though. We was running the whole building. Comprende? Bobby got no feelings. Burning money. I probably done seen the million 38 special. Bobby that de tranquilo. A thousand grams. My neck worth about a kilo. Head crack with the C Lo. Bitch, know I'm amigo. All black like a Beto. Shout out my nigga Tito. Shorty, she want a G though. Always stick to the G code. I'm steady counting them C notes. I never talk to the people. Oh yeah. Everybody screaming gang 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 gang. But them niggas ain't never gang bang. When you see me, just know that I got that thing. And everywhere that I go, they know my name. Everybody screaming gang 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 gang. But them niggas ain't never gang bang. When you see me, just know that I got that thing. And everywhere that I go, they know my name. Yeah, man. Everywhere we go, they know my name, man. I'm here, I'm riding. Guala gang, Guala productions. The door was up. Huh? Don't talk that high shit. shit. <laughs> <laughs> It's that seven block shit.